Hey there fellow hobbyists, uh, Mark here, family man and father of three. In this video I'll be discussing different brushes and giving a quick tutorial on a sample Warlord Games Zulu model. I've split this video up into sections to reduce the amount of time watching me paint um, and I hope to do some future videos looking at specific models or armies as well as going into more detail into some techniques. As always, I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Right then, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm just going to briefly talk to you about brushes. Um, in future videos, I will talk to you about painting techniques um, with regards to these brushes, so there's no concern there. I just wanted to just have a short video just introducing brushes that I have to hand ready so that I can just immediately start painting without any issues. Now, um, over the years, I have purchased a number of different brushes. Uh, the common one I started was with the, with the Citadel brushes. The three most common sizes I did start with were the uh, the fine brush, the standard brush, and the um, dry brushing. Those brushes uh, started me off very well. Uh, they're, they're very good. They can be a little bit pricey though. And what I would advise is over the course of using these brushes, when you're painting one or two miniatures, um, they, they will last a long time but as you start to speed up and paint your larger armies and want to get those that, that model production line out of the way you will tend to find that the brushes uh, die over the course of um, the excessive use now when obviously using a paintbrush like any good artist will tell you you never let the water go um, onto the metal part of, of the brush even if you do try that which I tend to do the, the lifespan of these brushes isn't going to be long so the more money you invest in brushes I suppose the less you've got to invest in models and paints etc although the brush is an important aspect of any artist now what I tend to do is is after a while the standard I always go for the standard brush as the standard brush over time loses some of its bristles and it ends up being a fine brush so what I tend to do is uh, a standard brush will will start off its life with me painting um, the, the base coat etc and then after a while as it starts to lose its bristles it'll turn into a fine brush for me. Uh, what I also tend to use is sometimes if, if I'm a bit rough with a larger brush um, I tend to use these for like dry brushing. Now that this brush looks terrible uh, for the purposes of dry brushing it, it, it's perfect. So I'll tend to have if you like my my rough brushes the ones that I'll do all sort of like the rough and ready work with or, or the medium or the fine detail work with and then I'll have um, a set of other brushes that sort of like a newish to try and if I need to do any finer detail etc or just get into those nicks and crannies uh, that are a bit struggling um, you can purchase any any types of brushes if you want I'll, I'd experiment with a, a large number I mean these these are dirt cheap I think they, they were from the works so they'll do just to get the base coats on and then you can move to your your better brushes if you need to for doing in the fine detail what I tend to have also with my brushes is just a little sort of like long stick uh, and my water and just a, a tissue sort of thing just for speed again now what I tend to do is sometimes when I, I said to you before I paint straight from the the pot so what I'll tend to happen is if I have my pot of paint here I'll open it up and I'll just literally paint straight out the pot. Now I'll generally give it a good shake and that'll just leave a bit of paint in the lid for me and then I'll, I'll paint from that lid. Doing this technique does have its downsides. Obviously having a lid open for sort of like half hour to an hour on occasion um, or sort of like 10-15 minutes even so air will get in and the paint will start to to dry that's inevitable now if, if you've invested in some good paints then all you need to do is what I tend to do is I take a larger brush dip it in some clean water and then just sort of like try and get a little bit of water into that pot um, just to sort of like uh, loosen up a bit and, and to get it sort of like flowing again because it will obviously dry sometimes if it's been a while and it's been sat there and I haven't used that color after sticking a bit of water in I'll then use my stick um, and then give it a good stir and then wipe that on my tissue and then if necessary not to avoid wastage if there's a little bit of paint there before it dries I'll tend to use that like, like a little palette and then every so often I'll, I'll get rid of this tissue when it when it runs out so like I said to you before um, you'll tend to gather a, a large number of brushes it, it's not something bad brushes will die as, as you as you paint so there's nothing to, to be concerned about that but always have um, a good set of brushes that you feel comfortable with as an artist. 
Right then, alongside this video about uh, brushes, I thought I'd just take the opportunity just to show you the, the layering technique and just do some, some quick ideas as to, to how to get a model quickly painted. Now I tend to do uh, models in uh, batches. Um, I would strongly urge anyone who's doing sort of like large projects to do that. Um, you could easily start us with three models, get a bit of practice in, then increase it to five. And then in this occasion, I'm trying to, because I've got so many to do, I'm doing them in batches of particularly 10. Now all you need to do um, is, or if you wish to, just start with the base is what I tend to do and just um, dry brush that that initially. So just um, wet the brush a little bit, get yourself your, your primary colour. In this instance I already have the base colour set, so this in, in theory is the second, the second tone that I'm going to be putting. Get rid of the excess water, just dab it off there, use the um, cloth just to to get excess paint off and then just gently gently just uh, brush it what you'll tend to find is the more you do it the more you'll get familiar with that particular aspect of it now in this instance obviously I used a larger brush for that just just to get that done and dusted um, I'm going to use um, three three primary colors if you like or layer one colors um, the Arctic grey buff leather and spear shaft for uh, the different aspects and then I'm just going to do the second layer of the flesh. Now with the second layer of the flesh again I take a smaller brush, um, give it a bit of a shake just to get that up there and then get the excess water off just dip dab and then just on this particular model just try and highlight uh, not, not in particular sort of like detail just to try and highlight the, the main areas as if where the light would sort of like catch that particular aspect of the the flesh if you like also get rid of some excess paint and I, I sometimes just generally just dry brush the face especially when I'm doing large groups of models as such and then for the other three sections um, in this instance for this particular Zudu I'm going to do the, the cloths are going to be white um, the uh, buff leather are going to be the, the various straps um, and the spear sh shaft is going to be the spears and other sort of like minor aspects just to mix up the just to mix up those browns if you like so I use the same brush again just dab, get rid of the excess and then just as fast as you can just just dip dab it over there as such you don't tend to to I tend not to be too sort of like gentle when I'm trying to apply these sort of like base coats because I can always correct the detail afterwards if necessary by using a black or another darker shade so you can always conceal that. So in this instance I'm just going to do quickly to show you that. With the spear shaft, same principle, just pick the different aspects that I want to, to get done there. And then last but not least do the buff yellow, buff leather again just highlight those or do those in as such now what I'll do is I'll cut the video finish finish this particular model off and then show you the, the next step that I'm going to do right then so what I've done is I've applied um, the second layer uh, of tone on the flesh and the base and then if you like the, the primary or the first layer on the cloth uh, the shields and um, the weapons okay so it might not be able to say it very clearly here but it, it was very very rushed I'm not I'm not sort of like spending innate amount of time on this because it can always get fixed later on in, in the last stage however you want to try and not make huge mistakes at, at this point because obviously it'll take a little bit longer so but the, the more you practice the more you'll get used to it so once this this is dried what I tend to do in this instance I've got two two washes I've got a black and a brown and I'm going to be using the black on the, the white just to, to, to bring that out a bit and then the brown on the shields weapons and, and other aspects again in the last video I just used these three brushes if you like two medium apply brushes and one larger one I'm going to take the larger one and uh, apply the washes just briefly again show you how I'm going to do that so just add a little bit of water not too much and then check consistency on the tissue if you want and then just apply 
just apply that wash there just to to bring out that detail okay right I've applied the washes onto the model as you can see here the, the washes are fairly good with regards to bringing out the detail back onto that model especially when you've been applying those those base layers if you like um, now it's you give it a bit of time to dry so that there's no there's no mixing of, of colors etc and then start applying your second stages now in this instance if it if it was just a fairly small army i'd be applying a second stage to to certain areas but because this is a fairly large army i'm going to skip the second stage for certain elements of the model just to speed things up a little bit first thing i'm going to do is just finish off the base ready so that i can the last stage will be obviously adding detail and flocking again as same as always a bit of dry brushing technique i use a lighter tone in this instance base hat base sand and it just brings out just generally over some of the areas just to bring out some of the features of that you don't necessarily need to cover the whole area just highlight certain aspects there for that base and then same sort of application so the final application for the skin in which case it, it's it's the third and final layer tend not to to start to wash these and just use just a little bit of paint and then just highlight certain aspects or, or raised parts of the model again just where you think the light might hit that particular aspect and then finally I take a fine detail brush for um, the leather and then this is where I forego the second stage purely because I'm trying to get through as many models as possible and then all you just do is highlight or bring out sort of like raised areas of that particular model okay and then what I tend to find as well for things such as wood um, you can just rather than just doing the raised highlights you can do where the, the wood would kind of like flow and then the same goes for the spear shaft again taking my fine detail brush taking the final shade if you like um, there it is, sorry, wrong one. And then just doing just doing the fine raised area of that as such. Right then, so I've added um, the final detail, so I uh, dry brushed uh, white on the cloth areas um, finished off adding a bit more detail on the shield and uh, weapon and then highlighted the leather etc now on some of the models I did the eyes with a fine detail brush and, so, and some teeth and then to finish off I just did some uh, touching up with the black on the shield and some of the areas on the cloth now if if I was spending a bit more time with regards to the model and it wasn't such a large army I'd probably spend a little bit more time either highlighting and adding that extra layer but because this particular army is fairly large I want to kind of like do a fairly decent job but also within the same speed so then I would do obviously all of them together made a little base for them and then sorted this out now that just before obviously finishing off I had a bit of flock on the bottom um, I tend to put my flock in in a little container uh, use some dab of PVA glue stick it in that container and then just using this little sort of like um, kebab stick just just push it down uh, and then blow off all the excess okay well I hope you have enjoyed watching this video um, and it's been of some use to you um, I'll include some stills of the model from this video uh, towards the end just so you can see what it looks like close up as always I would love to hear from you and what you think and maybe offer some suggestions on some future videos or even what models you might want to see me paint next uh, if I have them in my collection uh, take care thank you very much see you soon bye